Hello everyone out there. This is my first video on Cambridge series of IELTS. Uh, here I would like to take you through the step-by-step -step process uh, of reading wherein you will learn how to do reading effectively and systematically without wasting much of your time. Uh, so let's start with the first book of Cambridge that is Cambridge 1 and we are going to start with reading passage 1. Uh, we'll first look at the questions uh, instead of looking at the text first. Now this is the first strategy that you need to apply here. So we'll first go to the question part. The first set of questions is uh, gap feel. Uh, here you can see that you are given list of words from which you have to select the option and fill the gap. As you may see that I have underlined certain parts. Uh, so we'll first start with the first gap. Uh, they tried to blank burning logs or charcoal blank that they could create fire themselves. Now, uh, the highlighted portion that is burning logs or charcoal uh, are important words that we call keywords uh, which can help us find the answer from the passage. So we'll go to our text first and see where we can spot burning logs and charcoal. But before that we'll pay attention to what title uh, the passage has. It's about a spark of flint, how fire leapt to life. Now, without uh, having to read so much uh, in detail, uh, we will just skim through the passage and get to the words that we have already underlined, that is burning logs or charcoals. So, uh, we will just uh, move our uh, pencil across the text uh, without making much efforts to understand everything and come to the point where we can spot burning logs or charcoals. Now this highlighted portion shows where these two words lie, so burning logs and charcoals. Now we will care a little more to understand what it means to say. Unable to make flame for themselves, the earliest people probably stored fire by keeping slow burning logs alight or by carrying charcoals. Now. They tried to blank burning logs or charcoal. They, they tried to store burning logs. That is what our passage says. But do we have the same uh, word in the list of words given? Now, in IELTS, we can't expect the same word to be in the list of options. Uh, so we need to find out uh, a close synonym to store. And uh, the closest in its meaning is preserve. So, answer to gap 1 is preserve. Now, the second gap is in continuation uh, with the first one. So, we need to read over and see uh, what it means to put across. Uh, they tried to blank burning logs or charcoal blank that they could create fire themselves. Let's go back to the passage to find where the answer is. Now it says, how and where men learned how to produce flame at will is unknown. Okay. So, unknown is the correct answer uh, for the gap number two. So, do we have, do we have the same word in the list of words? No, obviously not. So we need to again find out the synonym for it and uh, we have unaware here which is closest in meaning, unaware means unknown. So they tried to preserve burning logs or charcoals, unaware that they could create fire themselves. Later it is suspected that first men made flames were produced by blank. Here it says it is probably secondary invention accidentally made. So it was. It is a reference word that means uh, fire. So fire was probably a secondary invention 
accidentally made during tool making operations. Let's go back to our question and let's see the list of words if we find anything related to uh, accidentally or not. So we do not have the same word but it says produced by blank. So produced by chance. By chance is the closest in meaning uh, to made accidentally. So chance by chance is the correct answer. Now next is the very first fire lighting methods involve the creation of blank by for example rapidly blank a wooden stick in a round hole. Now for us first fire lighting methods rapidly and a wooden stick uh, will serve as keywords because these are the words that we need to focus on while looking for the answers in the passage. Let's go back to our passage and see where we find anything related to the first fire lighting methods. It says earliest methods of making fire was through friction. So earliest means the first fire lighting methods. This is a paraphrase for the very first fire lighting methods involve the creation of friction. So let's check out the list of words. Luckily we are given uh, the same word friction so we do not have to paraphrase it here. So fourth uh, gap will have friction as its answer. Uh, for example rapidly blank a wooden stick in a round hole. So rapidly and a wooden stick are two uh, important words that we need to look for in the passage. It says European peasants would insert a wooden drill, wooden stick in a round hall. Here we got something related to what we are looking for. So wooden drill in a round hall and rotate it briskly. Briskly can be a bit of raised as rapidly. So going back to our question, it says rapidly rotate. So we have, do not have the same form of rotate but we have another form uh, with a gyron form uh, that is rotating. So for example rapidly rotating is the right answer to question number 5. The use of blank or persistent cheaping was also widespread in Europe and among other people such as Chinese and blank. These two uh, gaps are interconnected. Now the use of blank or persistent cheaping. The persistent cheaping or so we need to find out another way or another synonym for persistent cheaping. Okay. Uh, let's check out our passage. Here it says Percussion method of fire lighting date back to Paleolithic times when some Stone Age tool makers discovered that cheaping flints produce sparks. So it is which method? A percussion method or persistent cheaping. So percussion or any synonym related to it should be our answer. Let's check out the words, list of words. Luckily we have the same word given in the list of words, percussion. So answer to question 6 is the use of percussion or persistent cheaping was also widespread in Europe and among other people such as Chinese and now here we need to make out that they are talking about nationality. Chinese and we need to find out another nationality. Uh, just browse through the list of words if we uh, can spot uh, nationalities in the uh, options then it is Mexicans and we have Eskimos. So we have two nationalities. Uh, we need to check our passage which one is the right one. It says uh, the technique became more efficient after the discovery of iron about when uh, the Eskimos produce slow burning spark and it says by striking 
quartz against iron pyrites, a compound that contains sulfur. The Chinese lit their fires by striking porcelain with bamboo. So we have got Chinese here and that means the other nationality is Eskimos. So answer to our next cap that is question number 7 is Eskimos. Next is a uh, European practice of this method continued until 1850s blank the discovery of phosphorus some years earlier. Let's check our passage. Now 1850 is a cue to us and uh, I would say uh, in Europe so they are talking about Europe so here we can find our cue. In Europe, the combination of steel, flint and tinder remained the main method of fire lighting until the mid 19th century. See mid 19th century in terms of years can come around to 1850s only. Next it says fire lighting was revolutionized by the discovery of phosphorus isolated in 1669. So the discovery of phosphorus was later in 16, uh, was quite earlier uh, in 1669. So though there was uh, sulfur uh, available, they continued with the same method till 19th century. So Though we do not get the exact answer or direct answer, uh, we need to figure out it uh, this way that in spite of the discovery of phosphorus some years earlier, they continued with the same method. So despite is the right or correct answer. Now uh, this is little tricky and uh, when we are running out of time, uh, it is uh, better to work uh, smart rather than uh, trying to understand each and everything. So here what we can do is that we try to fit the gap uh, with whatever options are available. I can say see this despite is one of the most possible answers and sunlight until 1850s sunlight the discovery of no does not fit then heating no not a good match until until is already given so cannot be our answer random the discovery out of question because it is completely meaningless leaking the discovery again out of question without the discovery though it goes grammatically correct but does not make sense so cannot be our choice eskimos cannot come a smoke no realizing the discovery of does not uh, so fit meaningfully heavenly is out of question make and surprised are again not good matches so it is despite which fits the best so this way also you can figure out the answers uh, without uh, reading over and over again to get the meaning moving on to our next type of question that is matching one uh, this question is related to matching the description of matches with the names of types of matches. Okay. Uh, in this matching, we uh, have to follow some different kind of strategies. Uh, so instead of going by the description, it is uh, always advisable to go by the description of types of matches in the passage. Now, uh, as the names of the matches will be quite apparent and clear enough uh, to spot in the passage, it is always advisable uh, and desirable as well to uh, read the description of each matches as they come or uh, as they are spotted in the text and instead of going by the description in the question. So, let's go back to our passage. No, first we'll look at uh, the names of types of matches, the, e the eternal match, the instantaneous light box, congreves, lucifers, the first strike anywhere match, lender sums, safety match, book matches, waterproof matches. Okay, so we will now focus on 
all these types of matches and its and their description. Now, in uh, here in uh, on the second pa uh, page, we have uh, the highlighted portion which talks something about a phosphoric candle or eternal match, a sealed glass tube. Okay, it is talking about a tube containing a twist of paper tipped with phosphorus. Let's try to match it with the description given to us in the question. Now, it says relied on airtight glass container. Glass container is a tube which is the eternal match. So, A is the right answer to question number 14. Next is the first matches resembling those used today were made in 1827 by John Walker, an English pharmacist who borrowed the formula from a military rocket maker called Congreve. So Congreve actually is the one which resembles uh, the matches those are used today and that was borrowed from military rocket formula. Now there are there are two matches uh, for the question for the description sorry okay identical sorry uh, first to look like modern matches that means resembling matches that are used today that is called paraphrasing that is con greaves so C is the right answer to question number 12 and uh, it was uh, copied from a military formula so made with the help of army design army is uh, paraphrased as military so C congreves is the right answer to question number 15 next is Walker never patented his invention and three years later it was copied by Samuel Jones who marketed his product as UC Pulse. Okay, it was copied. So there was an existence of it before uh, the invention of UC Pulse. So uh, identical to a previous type of match. This is a, a very nice paraphrase of copy because there was an existence of the similar kind. So D, UC Pulse is the right answer to question number 10. Then we have a strike anywhere match by substituting white phosphorus for potassium chloride in Walker's formula. However, since white phosphorus is a deadly poison, see strike anywhere match by substituting white phosphorus since white phosphorus is a deadly poison. So that was replaced by potassium. That was less dangerous. So made using less poisonous, that is less dangerous type of phosphorus, which is F strike, the strike, F or strike anywhere match. Next is uh, Lindstrom's safety matches were safe because the red phosphorus was non-toxic. So non-toxic means it was not so dangerous. Okay, less poisonous. So F may made using a less poisonous type of phosphorus that is Lundersum safety match. Sorry, uh, for question number 
11 is the right answer. It uh, caused deadly illness because it was poisonous. And uh, ninth, uh, in the question number nine, uh, since red phosphorus was less poisonous, uh, it was F, that is Lundersum safety match. So that was made using less poisonous type of phosphorus. And uh, next is here when a brewery had the novel idea of advertising its product uh, in match books. They, today, book matches are most widely used type in the US. So, novel idea of advertising and that was today's book matches. So, uh, book matches is the right uh, answer to question number 13. First match is used for advertising because advertising is a keyword here. Okay, so all these highlighted portions are keywords that help us find uh, and spot the answer in the text. Uh, this is, uh, that's all for section one. Uh, I hope this video is useful to you and uh, keep watching some other videos that will help you uh, in sharpening your uh, reading skills in IELTS. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.